Hello, hello, everyone. I'm Katie Talati, Director of Research at ARCA. I'm responsible for identifying and analyzing digital asset and blockchain opportunities for ARCA's funds. Um, this week, I am dialing in uh, from sunny Austin, Texas for Consensus, which is set to start tomorrow. So, uh, you know, I just actually hopped off the plane. So here you guys go. I'm making sure that you still get your token price moves for the week. Um, for those of you for, who are just joining us for the first time, um, my team and I examine token prices and the market events that act as catalysts for price shifts. Based on our research and market events over the past week, here are some notable token price movements and what we think drove those moves. Before we get started, just reminder, this is commentary. It is not intended to be investment advice, investment research, or an investment recommendation. Please consult your investment professional for your own circumstances. All right, guys, let's get started this week. So it's actually been pretty busy, um, surprisingly. Um, and we haven't even gotten to the main event, which is consensus running tomorrow through Saturday. So first up this week, we have Binance Coin or BNB. Um, so Binance is the world's largest crypto exchange. Um, and a, a news article this week came out from Bloomberg um, stating that the SEC is probing whether Binance's ICO was an illegal security sale. Binance conducted that ICO in 2017, um, July about. Um, so kind of like right when the crypto bull market of that uh, time span was uh, kicking off. At the time, the company raised $15 million, which helped the exchange jumpstart its business. Now the exchange is be, you know, rumored to be worth more than Coinbase and FTX um, valuation wise. And the you know token, Bin the Binance coin token is one of the largest by market cap. Um, so with this negative news, um, the token is down 4.8% 4 week over week. All right, next up here, we have Ribbon Finance. So um, Ribbon, um, sorry, so to start, Porter Finance, which is a company that creates bonds for DAOs. So basically, if a uh, decentralized um, organization wants to borrow money, um, Porter Finance will help them structure that offering. And so um, Porter Finance uh, launched its first product, which is a convertible bond for Ribbon Finance. So Ribbon Finance is a decentralized options protocol on Ethereum. Um, they're seeking to raise $3 million in debt via the convertible bond, which is 5x over collateralized using Ribbon tokens. So that sounds like a great deal in theory, but the collateral backing the bond is the Ribbon token, which is a liquid and does face a lot of inflationary pressure in the coming months. That factored in with Ribbon's declining vault volumes and already set thin net margins for the protocol, the offering at 7% yield to maturity, which includes the price of the embedded call option, is not that attractive for holders. If you guys are actually interested in a more technical breakdown, my colleague Hassan Basiri does an amazing job uh, breaking that down on his uh, Twitter. If you want to go to his uh, Twitter profile, you can see it there, or I've also linked it in the uh, notes here. So with this, even, even, even with this uh, offering, Ribbon is up 4.8% on the week. All right, next up, we have Helium Network. Helium is a wireless networking project, which is basically trying to provide internet connectivity um, using blockchain incentives. Helium introduced a Helium Improvement Proposal, or HIP, um, this week, which will lay the foundation for Helium to capture a much larger market and produce multiple revenue streams for holders. HIP 51 proposes that various wireless networks, that includes IoT, 5G, Wi-Fi, VPN, will operate as sub-DAOs, um, and each with its own token and governance. At the time, at the same time, H and T will still be required to acquire data credits, which is what people who want to use these wireless networks um, need to have um, throughout the ecosystem. Uh, so a lot of people are speculating that this will create a lot of additional demand for H and T. Obviously, it widens its total addressable market, which is also huge. And Helium is reacting quite well to that. It's up 18% on the week. All right, finally, last but not least, we have Chainlink. So Chainlink is a price oracle provider. Um, so for those who aren't familiar with what that is, within DeFi, a lot of um, projects are required to feed in um, feed in prices from the outside world or just any information from the outside world because you can't necessarily just get that in a blockchain. And because of the finality of smart contracts and how they execute, if you don't have a proper price feed, people um, you can basically manipulate um, DeFi projects or DeFi outcomes. Um, so Chainlink is one of the biggest or, or is the biggest Oracle provider. Um, they've been around the longest. They announced yesterday that they would be launching staking as part of Chainlink Economics 2.0. 
So just until now, um, those providing the price feeds didn't actually have anything at stake. Therefore, they could technically act maliciously, although Chainlink has done a very good job of curating people who provide prices and aggregating them. So that is less likely. Um, so and by introducing staking, Chainlink is going to make their network more secure. Um, as price oracles could have their stakes slashed. In addition to that, it will cause what potentially a supply sink on Chainlink as anybody who's providing price feeds in their system needs to now hold a stake of Chainlink tokens in order to operate. Um, they didn't announce a set date for when the staking will go live, but this is a huge milestone in uh, Chainlink's roadmap. As such, the market has priced this one up 25% week over week. All right, guys, that's all I have for you this week. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed our insights. If you're at Consensus Austin, feel free to message me on Twitter. And if you want to meet up, hang out, talk about tokens and price movements, always happy to. Um, and if not, tune in here again next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific to hear what's driving token prices.